Hey guys, DB right here, and welcome to, welcome back to What If Goku and Frieza Landed on Earth, continuing right where we left off the previous part. Now, the previous part, we talked about Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta's life under Law Frozen, and now how they're planning to overthrow after hearing about the truth that it was, in fact, Lord Frozen that blew up planet Vegeta. And, under Vegeta's orders, Raditz is on his way to Earth right now to um, bring his brother Kakarot, aka Goku, back into the fold. And, he arrives exactly when he does in the original timeline. The dif big difference at the moment is that Raditz is um, stronger in this timeline. Thanks to um, Frozen's policy of treating the Saiyans with respect and allowing them to become stronger. Now, that goes for um, Vegeta and Nappa as well. So, of course, as we've mentioned in the part before this, Goku is also stronger in this timeline. Thanks to his um, sparring sessions from Frieza, who frequently visited him in Mount Palzu in the last five years. And, um... Well, thanks to um, Frieza offering Gohan um, the best education possible, Chi-Chi doesn't stand in the way of Gohan being trained either. So, he's quickly catching up as well. And so now that we head into the reunion part of the story, Goku officially introducing Gohan to the rest of the gang, with the exception of... Um, Bulma and Frieza, because as said, both visited Goku quite frequently at Mount Palzu during this timeline. And well, their peace is quickly interrupted by the arrival of Raditz. Now, originally, Raditz had the same sort of demeanor that he had in the original. He was either gonna ask Kakarot to join him. Or he'd beat him senseless until he agreed to join him. However, as he um, closes in on the island and everyone has got a visual of him, he sees something that absolutely terrifies him on the spot. And that is Freezer standing right there. Remember, different timeline. Freezer's on Earth. <laughs> and now Raditz ain't afraid of no Freezer. He has mistaken Freezer for Lord Frozen. Lord, Lord Frozen? What are you doing here, my lord? Um, I know I came here without your permission. We weren't trying anything funny, honest. And it's kind of hilarious. Excuse me, sir. I'll have you know my name is Freezer. And what is this Frozen you spoke of? And well, this is where... The news are um, that this is the long-lost prince of the Cold Empire who was um, mysteriously disappeared. Remember, Frieza was originally supposed to take over the Empire, but due to the malfunctioning programming of his creation, of him being created in this timeline, knocking down a lot of the evil and replacing him with good qualities... King Cold had Frieza banished. And maybe they should have listened to Frieza because his ideas would have been a bit more worth it than wiping out civilizations anyways. But the bottom line is, King Cold did what he did and Frozen was in charge and... Yeah. So, with that, Vegeta and Nappa are also listening in too so that they've been hit with the same realization and um, Vegeta instructs Raditz to approach the situation carefully because if Raditz does anything hostile Frieza will just more likely incinerate him tell me Sam give me one reason I shouldn't destroy you right now you brutes have the tendency to lay planets to waste and I will not have that in my home sir not at all Oh, uh, of 
course not. I, I didn't come here to fight. I just needed to have a discussion with my brother here. Brother? Yes, Kakarot. I am Raditz, your older brother. And well, that hits um, Goku by surprise. How could you not remember me, brother? I'm sorry, I kind of hit my head when I was a little kid. It's true, and he's hit his head many times since. And well, with the realization that this is his brother, he's willing to hear Raditz out, and he tells them the entire truth, um, their life living with Frozen, what kind of tyrant he is, and that the fact that he um, wiped out their race along with their parents. And um, this doesn't really seem to phase Goku as of much, because, well, he has no memories of his parents or his life on planet Vegeta before that point, before his bump on the head. So, with that, and Frieza couldn't help but um, laugh at some of what Raditz said. Did you honestly believe your race was destroyed by a meteorite? Of course, someone from my family did it. Ah, you Saiyans. Well, I can't say I'm particularly heartbroken that you Saiyans are gone from existence. However, it's Goku's call. If he's willing to help you, then I guess I will too. And well, Goku's friends also do the same sort of uh, motion that they're, they're willing to help Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta overthrow this tyrant, especially if he's a threat to planet Earth. And well, chances are he may find planet Earth eventually. So, but Goku, on the other hand, has himself his own little condition. He and Raditz will have a fight right now, and then he'll um, inform Raditz of his decision. Goku can sense Raditz is um, pretty powerful, and wants to um, check him out, you know, because Goku likes to fight stronger guys. And well, Raditz is happy to oblige, and... Um, Goku tells everybody not to get involved in this fight. This is just a scuffle between brothers. A nice friendly match between brothers. And so they have um, a bit of a battle. And um, needless to say, Nappa and Vegeta are watching intently because Goku is matching his brother blow by blow. In fact, if anything, I'd say Goku's holding back a little bit. And Raditz is surprised by this at a power level of two. I mean, it's shocking enough that he's um, he was a power level of um, 330. But now his power level has skyrocketed to the point that it's matching him. And Goku is not showing any signs of wear and fatigue at the moment. While Raditz is beginning to huff and puff. It would seem Raditz has found himself a Saiyan stronger than him and Raditz thought he was going to be the top brother and well at the end of the match Goku is indeed the victor I can't believe it brother how'd you get so strong and then he puts two and two together right freezer training sessions under freezer yes in fact when um Goku decides to um, do a full-on power-up in front of his brother, the Scouter goes all the way up to 10,000. Incredible! You're as strong as father used to be! Zia Bardock, apparently, he was, about, he was uh, around the 10,000 mark, and Goku has reached that level. Remember, Frieza has to dial it back to avoid killing Goku whenever they train. But whenever he does hit Goku with a near powerful blow that does him enough damage, Goku does get quite a bit of Zenkai boost from him and that's helped him push, it, push him to those heights. Yeah. You know, if, if Frozen 
didn't have a policy of, of um, the remaining sands getting stronger like we covered in the previous part, Goku would be just about able to um, match the Prince. He definitely makes sport a napper. And um, Vegeta and Nappa are quite shocked by this because, yeah, they, they've heard the stories from Raditz that Kakron had a power level 2 when he was born, when he was born and now he's, um, what, early, early 20s and he's at 10,000? Hasn't even conquered a single planet! <laughs> oh, yes. Freezer and Kakarot are going to be invaluable allies against their struggle against the evil Frozen. So they are on their way to the planet right now in order to um, take negotiations further. In the meantime, though, um, Raditz also informs that Frieza that his father is dead and that um, Lord Frozen was the one who did it. And this actually does surprisingly get under Frieza's skin. What? It um, hits Frieza quite by surprise. Now, Frieza didn't like his father much, especially for banishing him and um, all the times he tried to make him do bad things. However, he still feels that loss. He's um, so angry right now, his um, power is beginning to um, overflow to the point that no one can approach him. Bulma can't calm him down at this point. No right. He'll pay for this. By my own hands, if possible. And so, with that, it was now time for them to formulate a bit of a plan. They got a year before Nappa and Vegeta arrive, and well, it's not like they can squeeze everyone into um, Raditz's Saiyan pod. So, Bulma suggests that she and her father can get to work on a spaceship. Something with a bit more power to it and can get them wherever they're going quicker and have the right facilities they need to survive in space. And Raditz also asks if they can include a grav chamber. We Saiyans tend to get stronger when we battle on planets with, specific, with a particular strength in gravity. A machine that can simulate us will do us wonders. Kakarot and I will be able to get stronger with that. And so, pretty much um, with that, the ship is on the construction. Napa and Vegeta are on their way. And um, Kami has decided that he wants to help too. So since no one's using the Dragon Balls anymore, he has summoned the Eternal Dragon to restore his youth and has begun training in the Room of Spirit and Time. After all, a monster like Frozen, he's not just a, a threat to planet Earth, he's a threat to the entire galaxy, the, the entire universe. So, yes, Kami must step up. Channel the inner Piccolo within him. And make himself more of a warrior. As well as a mystic. Or dragon Nam clan Namekian, whatever they call them. So. And I think this is where we're actually going to leave things for now. Will, um, Napper and Vegeta to help with um, this so-called alliance with the Earthlings. Um, all this and more next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next